this tutorial is intended to show you the results of the uh, design that we've done for the boundary radiation boundary and uh, using the eddy current. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to the setup and see the result of the matrix that we just created. Um, if you don't see uh, the matrix, uh, you can actually select the tab, but uh, basically when you right click on the setup and say results, you will go directly to the matrix here. Uh, we are at the frequency of 1 gigahertz and the matrix is at real and imaginary part and uh, you can see that we have this much of the uh, real part for our impedance and this much of the imaginary part for our impedance at uh, the terminal. Okay. Um, when you go with the RL, it uh, sub subsidizes for the imaginary part the um, the frequency that we are at. So as you can see that the uh, the impedance uh, of it, let's call it um, the um, basically J omega L is 249, but when you divide it by 1,000, one uh, 1 billion, you get uh, divided by 2 pi, you get 3.9 10 times 10 to the power minus 5, which is equal to 300 and um, actually 39 micro, uh, yes, 39.7 micro Henry for the inductance of the coil. Okay, that's perfect. Let's now go to to create the parameters for the the pointing vector. So as you know, the pointing vector, as you can see here, is equal to one uh, over two uh, times the real part of E times H conjugate. So let's go into the calculator and uh, make this uh, equation. Uh, first, uh, you go to the input, and then you go to the quantity, and then you select E as your quantity. Then you go to the input and select H. And then you say, I want to have the conjugate of the H. So basically, in the general tab, you can go under the complex, and then you can find the conjugate. So now we have E and H conjugate. So what we need to do here is under vector, we want to cross them because it's a cross of these two. And then we want to go to the complex part and make sure that we are looking at the real of that. And then we need to times it. So we go to the scalar and in, in sorry, in the input, and then we go for the number and then put the value of 0.5 and then we times that. Now we can add that as a pointing vector. Now we can use it later on if we want to uh, plot that. Okay, down. Sorry, done with this. Okay, now uh, what we want to do is we want to create the vector plot. Uh, the first thing we want to do is to select the outer surface that we just uh, created, the region, and then we go to the name expression under the field, and then select the point. There we go. And we can select for um, all objects here, and we press done. Perfect. So this is basically um, the, as you can see at the at at the round like the uh, ninety degree of the theta, we have the maximum amount of this um, uh, energy dissipation, which is kind of true because uh, E is maximum, and then you have. Uh, maximum E and then you have also the same B so that you get the maximum of the power uh, going out and you have minimum on the top and the bottom of that okay so this is good you can actually do this calculation and 
and get a result for that. Now, uh, if you want to calculate the resistance here, um, it's uh, it's basically we know that the resistance is uh, P average divided by the I, uh, RMS square, and uh, the P average here is going to be the all the P that we have uh, divide that have uh, integral of the uh, of the P over the surface, and I RMS because we choose the I to be 1.4. Uh, one four and the I RMS is one. Therefore, the R would be basically P average. And uh, here uh, you can actually calculate the P average. Uh, again, we go to the calculator here, and uh, uh, in the calculator we will select the pointing uh, uh, vector we just uh, created, and then we say, okay, copy that to the st st stack. And then from the input, the, the geometry, we basically select the surface that we create. Uh, so this surface that we create was the region. Basically, we call it the, actually, that's the volume. We're going to go to the surface. And here we had outside. There we go. So this is the surface that we created, if you remember, at the end of the uh, previous video. And now we just want to say OK to that. And then we will go to the normal of that. And then make sure that we are basically saying, OK, this is a surface. We have this uh, pointing vector. So we want to make sure that this uh, pointing vector we will uh, do a crop dot with the normal of the surface at any point. And then we will integral that. So we have an integration here. And then you'll say, OK, now evaluate how much um, I'm getting. So when you do the evaluation here, we have um, 0.4 uh, Watt, uh, which also translates into 0.4 Ohm for the, for the resistance or the radiation resistance, which actually meets what we actually uh, wanted to see. Because if you look at the uh, dimensions that we had the R uh, the the resistance radiation resistance for a dipole uh, magnetic dipole is basically um, this formula and in this formula you can see that the uh, beta is the wave number and is radius of the loop and uh, when you put the numbers in uh, to this equation you basically get uh, roughly 0.4 uh, or for the resident uh, for the radiation resistance and so this is something that we actually can accept um, now in this um, video I just showed you how to see the the, the pointing uh, vector the power that is actually getting out of this um, the dipole magnet magnetic dipole coil um, using the eddy current simulations and again I'm uh, trying to emphasize on the fact that you cannot go in higher frequencies because it's Maxwell, not HFSS. Um, now, in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can create the 1 16th, very smaller part of this uh, design, and you simulate that and you get almost the same result. Okay, so stay tuned for the next tutorial regarding this. Uh, if you have any questions regarding this, uh, uh, boundary conditions or the procedures that I went through, uh, please put it under the comment section. And if you have any other questions uh, or any design questions that you have, you can send an email to me. My email is kamiark2002 at gmail.com. Uh, I guess that's it. And have a wonderful day.